Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here. Well, the Bible I got on eBay a few weeks ago, it's a Collins Bible from 1959. It is a Iona Clear Text Bible. Now, it doesn't tell me what kind of leather this is. I personally think it's some kind of pebble grain Morocco because it's fantastic. Uh, just incredible leather. Got this for $7 on eBay. Of course, Collins considered to be one of the premier Bible publishers, then bought out by World Publishing, became Collins World, and uh, I'm not sure where they are now. Um, I've always liked Collins Bible. I always liked their little license thing they would put that the king gave them permission or the queen gave them permission to print this Bible. Just a side note, uh, used to sell Bibles, so the Cambridge rep told me one time, he said, do you know why we still sell Bibles at Cambridge? I said, no, why? Now, this was in the late 80s, and at that time, Cambridge Bibles, they weren't profitable. They didn't sell very many of them. Now they've kind of gotten gone through a renaissance. People love them. They love the quality. A lot of big Bible collectors out there. And uh, But at that time, it was really down, Cambridge Bibles. He said, do you know why we still sell them? I said, well, no, why do you still sell them? He said, because they don't make us money at the moment. He said, the king told us to begin printing them in the 1500s. And the king never said stop. So when he said it, if you're a British subject, you do it till he says stop. So Cambridge said, even though we don't make money, even though people really didn't want their Bibles too much at that time, maybe a few preachers did, you know, some of the Concord reference and that type of thing, he said, we still have to print the Bible because the king told us to, and he never told us to stop. I think that's a good instruction for us. Jesus told us, go into all the world, teach all nations. He never told us to stop, so we do it till he says stop. Anyhow, getting back to this Bible... This is a PCE, or a pure uh, Cambridge edition of the Bible. Which those of you that know PCE Bibles, we're going to make a video about that, what that entails. But this fits all 12 points for a PCE. I'm not even sure I agree with the last point. Cambridge says the only reason it's there because they forgot, they made an uh, oversight. Local church Bible publishing says that it doesn't have to necessarily defend all 12 points. But anyhow, this is a pure PC. So some of the Collins Bibles that they were printing in the 50s are PCE Bibles. It's also the self-pronouncing text has some of the best uh, center column reference that I've seen. Another thing that I really like, I don't like the pictures that it has. It has some of these good old full-color pictures in there. I mean, they're okay, but you know what I'm saying. I would prefer the Bible to be a little smaller. But in the very back, you know, those thick uh, picture pages take up a lot of room. But in the back, it's got a tremendous section by Charles H. H. Wright, Doctor of Divinity and Ph.D. on Bible study helps. It almost looks like an old Oxford Sunday School Teacher's Edition. But listen to some of these names of what people did and what they did. James Stalker, D.D., how to study the Bible. This is the same stalker of Stalker's Life of Christ and Stalker's Trials of Jesus. Inspiration by Philip Schaff. Schaff did a pretty good job on his history, not so good on inspiration. But anyhow, a sketch of the early churches again by Schaff. Excellent things. Let me read some more things that are in here. Sunday school teachers' use of the Bible by John H. Vincent. I think that's the same Vincent with Vincent's word study. It gets even better. Daily Bread by R. M. McShane. Wow. How to read your Bible through in a year. An index of text for Christian workers by Major D. W. Whittle. Again, just fantastic. And then one of my favorite parts of uh, Languages of the Bible by Charles H. H. Wright. And uh, he was of some note back in the day. And uh, I think he did some things that even weren't Bible related. He was a very smart man. And then Ancient Versions of the Old Testament by William Rainey Harper. Invaluable information here. Then Ancient Versions of the New Testament by none other than Alfred Plummer. 
plumber came out with a, uh, like a Greek reference work. English versions of the Bible by Henry Evans, going all the way back to Alfred the Great, Anglo-Saxon translations, on through. And then another great little section, the apocryphal books of the Old Testament by George J. Spurrell. Again, we don't believe those are inspired, but it is good to know about them. And then New Testament Apocrypha by William Heber Wright. The New Testament Apocrypha, like the story of Veronica, the epistle of Lentulus, the correspondence between Abgar, king of Edison, and Jesus, which is a whole other subject, that whole thing. And uh, because uh, Armenia thinks they're the first Christian kingdom and they still like their silver coins, they still have Noah's Ark on them and all kind of stuff. And then another great section, Old Testament Chronology by Owen C. Whitehouse. Tremendous things in here. Fantastic. And then it's going to have, I'm going through Old Testament Chronology, it's very large. And then, again by Owen C. Whitehouse, Chronology of the period intervening between the age of Malachi, 450 B.C., and the birth of Christ. Again, a tremendous history of that time period. What was going on in Rome, Egypt, Syria, and Judea. Basically, you know, the four generals of Alexander the Great that uh, split up the kingdom after Alexander the Great. And then brief chronological conspectus of New Testament history. A summary of gospel incidents by A.R. Fawcett. This is the same one that wrote the Fawcett Bible Dictionary. Again, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so that's very good. Harmony of the Gospels, which if you've never looked at a Harmony of the Gospels, they're extremely beneficial. I use them in preaching and teaching many times. Then a sketch of apostolic history, order of events. Again, this is several pages long. goes into Paul's missionary journeys, other things, Roman emperors and governors of Palestine, the Herodian family tree with New Testament connotation. White House does again Hebrew festivals. And again, I'm not sure if I can show you just how detailed this is. You know, it's kind of small print, but it's voluminous information just on Hebrew festivals. To find this on eBay for $7 in what looks to be some kind of uh, pebble grain Morocco. I mean, now it is the total red binding. No gold edges. Only one ribbon marker, but it looks like a great ribbon marker, as a matter of fact. An index to the Holy Bible, like altar, uh, index to various names, that type of thing. And so we come past the index to an extremely good concordance of the Bible. And then excellent maps, tremendous map section in the back. I just want to show you this great quality, great hand size, um, fantastic study helps. Decent size print, I'm going to guess about 8.5, 8.75, maybe up to 9. It's a very clear print. But you can just, you know, so many Collins Bibles just oozed with quality. This is one of them. So, And it's also a PCE, which I know means a lot to some of you out there, to several of you out there, that it is a full-fledged PCE. So you can find these. The Iona Clear Text Collins Bible 1959. So if you can find those Iona Clear Text types, and it is an extremely clear text type, Almost no ghosting whatsoever. Um, I think it would benefit you, especially if you like PCE, especially just the study notes at the back. Fantastic. God bless you today.